Welcome to episode 50 of Let's Talk Geek, the great Skype in today's show, the HTC Flyer, quadruple A batteries and mangoes. Thanks for listening. Welcome to episode 50 of Let's Talk Geek. With us in the studio, we have Jan, his brother Gerrit, and uh, Johan Els doing the mixing, and myself, Stuart Allen. And we have Tim on Skype, uh, first Skype proper Skype in uh, for the show. So that's pretty cool. He's going to say, how's it, Tim? No, he's not. A little bit slow there, hey? Our phone is just very slow. Yeah, we know you're a little bit slow. Uh, he's a bit <laughs> sick as well, so he's been taking the big blue tablets. So if he starts if he starts talking nonsense halfway through the show, just ignore him. All right, um, events. Uh, not much happening at the moment, uh, but it's the Twitter Blanket Drive on Friday, and uh, next week Wednesday is World IPv6 Day. So get your crap ready for IPv6 Day. Yeah, yeah, let's 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 so get those server switched. Uh, working. Yeah. S- sorry, Tim. Our server will be on an IPv6 IP address for next week Wednesday. Okay, cool. Great stuff. You heard it here, folks. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> Exclusive. All right, but if you want to check up any other events, uh, look at uh, uh for more geek holidays and dates and events and happenings. And if you know of something maybe that we've missed, uh, do uh, let us know. Yeah, I just pop a drop an email feedback at Let's Talk Geek or feedback at LT Star or, or tweet or us or tweet us. send us a fax. A I think we actually raven. probably could accept faxes. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So um, that that would be good to get some feedback on. Um, if you've got anything else to say, you know, uh, like it, don't like it, things we should cover. Uh, possible guests, people that want to come on, drop us an email. It'll be great. And we'll and before we move on, Jargon's just mentioned in the in the IRC, wow, 50. I mean, we've got a half century here. Oh, folks. yeah, that is true. Yes, congratulations. 50, 50 episodes. Almost a full year's worth of episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Only took us slightly more than a year. No, it's way over a year, but I'm just saying. <laughs> All right, moving along. Uh, let's get into the topics for tonight. Um, so we got from my broadband uh, more uncapped hosting. Jan, you know a little bit about this. Yeah, yeah. Um, I tend to uh, work for my broadband. So um <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I hope your boss is not listening. Um, Every now and again. <laughs> <laughs> How would you put a definition on that statement? That was one of the worst conceits. I, I blame all the writing I did today. I am, I am adjectived and nouned out. There is nothing left in my vocabulary to use. Anyway, yeah, so MWeb, MWeb have been doing um, quite a number of things in the, in the uncapped hosting space. Um, so uh, they, they um, kind of, uh, I want to say, like, uh, upset the apple cart oh, no, quite they a bit. Did some um, last the, the, with their last launch, um, they they pretty much let you uh, get a, a hosting account from them. It's uncapped, twenty rand a month. If you're an ADSL subscriber, then you get it free for the first couple of months, and it's it's literally uncapped. Yeah, the you only thing that was capped was the database size. The database yeah. size was capped at fifty meg, and you can have that increased if you need to. Yeah, but come and on. and there were ob- obviously, I mean, and um, people say it's not uncapped if there are fair usage restrictions. There are fair usage restrictions on every uncapped product in the market that I know of, even, even internationally. The, the, they might be more lenient than ours, but MWeb's fair usage restriction on the uncapped hosting isn't even that restrictive. They just say, listen, you can't use us for a cloud storage service. Yes. It has to be for a website. So any file that you upload and use as part of your uncapped uh, hard drive space has to be used for the website itself. You can't back up your porn to our service, please. Um, anyway. Uh, I'm going to be testing this with some of our shows I was trying to set up an account uh, but I think due to my I messed something up and I just haven't had time to phone them up to work out what I've, what I've done but we're going to try to get some of our um, latest shows hosted on there to try to save some guys of some of the international bandwidth cool Okay, Tim, on that then, if you already started looking at it, what type of access do they give you? Have you got to go through FTP or is it uh, what type of access do you I actually get? 
point where I've got my account login. Uh, I, saw, I went onto their web interface and started to log in, and I got a bit confused because I already have the ADSL account. And at some point, they asked you for a new, uh, like a new login name. And I thought, wait a second, it's unlinked it. But it turns out they actually want two different logging names. Just heads up, everyone. Um, so that your second one will log into your account. That's specifically for the hosting side. Unfortunately, I got through that, and then I never got the email confirming. So I think it's more likely that I stuck something up along the way. Look, um, Tim, you, you you have touched on something there, and that's that MWeb's um, web interface isn't the greatest out there. Um, they <laughs> they they try and they have improved it significantly. But like I tried to set up my by default, for instance, they lock your ADSL account to your line, right? Yeah. And so you've got to go in and unlock it. And what I, all I wanted to do because you can you can actually have it set up to go to multiple to multiple lines. So I wanted to do that. But in order to do that, you have to verify your email address. But the email never got to me. So there was some funky integration uh. error between their web and the email server. Anyway, so after now after this, MWeb have now launched, uh, this is a, an uncapped hosting account for the average man, right? They've now launched Business, business Uncapped, yeah. and that is dedicated servers. Xeons, um, lots of gigabytes and terabytes of awesomeness. Um, so lots of gigs of RAM. Uh, lots of lots of hard drive space, like you get full hard drives to use. It it looks sexy. If it, if you guys if you haven't checked it out, take a take a look at that. Is it's this really virtual cool. private servers or is that <laughs> a dedicated? <laughs> These server? are dedicated servers. So you're telling me for six hundred rand, I can get a a Xeon two point four gigahertz with four gig of RAM and a terabyte of hard drive space. That's what the and table uncapped says. Uncapped data. That's what the table says for six hundred bucks. That's Ho a pretty and, the, the, and they call it hosted server. So they host. Yes, no, no, of that's course. Yeah. But that's a pretty sweet deal. Okay. But, 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 is it now? what we're paying for overseas hosting. And it's about time. <laughs> is this going to be, is, are you locked into a contract? Because somewhere along the line, they have to pay for that, for that server. See, th this, this is now the interesting thing. And when, when you chat to these service providers, the way they break this down for you, and, and I suspect this is why guys like Afriost came into the, into the bandwidth market. Because... MWeb sells a lot of downstream, has a lot of downstream traffic, but they pay for symmetric lines. They pay, they pay per yeah. for the capacity. They don't pay per gig or whatever, right? So they've got fixed capacity, and it's all coming down. So now they've got all this up capacity, which is perfect for a server product that is unsold. So this is just a cool way to monetize bandwidth, bandwidth that they've that already wasted paid for. anyway. Well, good for them. Yeah, well, indeed. And it's very, it's a good price. I must say, it's really, it's quite interesting. I mean. Mm. Oh, well, that's, that's at least something, because I know we've bitched and moaned a whole bunch of times um, about the lack of decent serving, uh, hosting services in this country. So Yeah, and, oh, and well. some are good, but they were expensive. Bandwidth especially is incredibly Ex expensive. Ridiculously yeah. expensive. Now, uncapped bandwidth. Yeah. It's pretty cool. I hope, I hope it's a stable solution. That's, that's the only thing I can um, I, I wonder about. Yeah, you see, that's the problem with having a dedicated machine still. If you've got a hardware failure on it, that's it. It's always nice if you uh, if you've got uh, you know the cloud the cl on the cloud side. There's all the other negatives that go with it, but at least you could be you know migrated seamlessly across to a um, to a to another server. Yeah, to another yeah. node. Yeah. Mm. Tim wants to add something there. Add so it I to, to add something, Jan. With you're talking about the web interface for multiple lines. Oh yeah. Uh, I had a similar problem with when I was trying to move my line. Yeah. So I must say, I phoned them at half past seven, they called this on a public holiday, and they sorted me out within like 20 minutes. Yeah, I, I, I must agree that there. That in South Africa. Yeah, no, I must agree there. When I phoned in to have this thing sorted out, it was done within minutes. So even though the web interface is not that great, your customer support remains good. I okay. tweeted that again today. I had a problem yesterday, mm. and these I'm guys sorry. are just, they're doing it right. I'm sorry. They are taking over the market. The rest of the guys can learn from MWF. They're doing very, very well in support. If they don't get that award this year at my broadband, I will sign the petition. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it should be noted, we don't award these things willy-nilly. They are voted upon. So if you want MWeb to win, vote. Vote, vote now. <laughs> I All will right. pass multiple votes. <laughs> another, another thing that happened in the tech world this week, uh, Linux has now moved to version 3. And absolutely nothing has changed. Yeah, so <laughs> Linus, Linus uh, it was really funny. I mean, uh, you yeah, read the mail. Um, actually, it, it started off, the, the idea was, um, well, not that. The reason why, he's, he says, honestly, um, 
The only reason why we're changing the version to, num to version 3 is he just can't count to 40. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, the, that was the argument. End of the story. He's the, ma he's the maintainer, and he decided we're going to change to version 3. Done and dusted. But nothing's changed. It's not going to be a, a zero-point release again with all the crap that comes with it. There's no architecture changes. There's uh, actually even this from going from, what's it, 2.6.40 to... Three is going to be even a smaller uh, window, uh, a smaller uh, what's it a merge window? Yeah, yeah. And there's going to be a, just mostly we a little bit of driver changes, a little bit here and there, and that's so it. it's a normal incremental update. It's even going to be smaller than a normal incremental update. <laughs> I <laughs> so love this. He, he, he his project embodies the open source philosophy of release early, release often. So yeah, that's cool. but have a read it. Have a read the mail. It's it's quite funny. It's um yeah. It's <laughs> he was he's got a bit of a sense of humor. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he does have a personality that people tend to clash with as well. I mean, it's the mailing list. The oh, the yeah. Linux if you read the Linux kernel mailing list, it can get a bit brash. And and uh, like recently, there was a fallout about Linus took on the arm guys. Uh, I mean, and this is this is uh, Im uh, important for us to discuss mobile all the time because it's the Linux ARM kernel that runs on our Android devices, yeah. right? Um, so, but he took the guys on. He ripped into them. He says, "Listen, this this uh, kernel structure is a mess. Um, the the the, the, the the tree and the architecture, just the whole thing is a mess, and you guys need to clean it up." And uh, so there's like a backwards and forwards, and the people are like, "No, Linus, you don't understand ARM." And, uh, and uh, I, I don't know, like, I think one has to be pretty brave and ballsy to think that Linus Torvalds uh, would speak, would, would render an opinion on something without it being thought through. Um, but, uh, but it was an interesting discussion nonetheless to follow. Speaking of, um, speaking of ARM, did you guys see Project Kal-El? From yeah. NVIDIA yeah. and the, the global quad stuff. Cores. The quad core, very, mm, very nice, cool yeah. very cool demo too. But yes. creepy <laughs> demo, but very cool. I haven't seen the demo yet, but I, I think that the name is, uh, I think the, 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 the name is fairly humble, hey? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's hard to be humble But do yourself, like a, I'm going to post it in the, I'll put it in the, it'll be in the show notes, the link to the YouTube video. Um, do yourself a favor. And, and go it. check it out. Because I'm going to go check that out. It's really, really pretty cool. So there it is. We've got it. I put it in the RC as well. It's uh, basically you've got to roll a ball around and they do dynamic lighting and physics and cloth physics and no, um, what else? Accelerometer integration and sound and all the rest of the nonsense. But it is. Whoa. Who's Tell doing that? you playing it. <laughs> oh, is it on? Uh, <laughs> Hi, everyone. To show you a demo we're working on but anyway do yourself a favor watch it it's it's pretty cool and that's coming out did they no, give a date I'm, I'm not sure um might be quarter four or something i think it was but it, it for, would for the manufacturers so yes, we'll be so seeing things middle next year middle next year so about which this is time next year which is <laughs> that's scary yeah and i yeah so it's hmm and it's got, okay, so the, the little bit of ideas of what it's got. It's got a quad-core processor mm -hmm. and a 12-core GPU on a, on a die. Whee. I so mean, what are you going to do with that kind of graphical power? It's going to be... I don't even ask those questions anymore. I just say, give them the hardware. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And see what they do with it. I mean, I, give I them the hardware and, and then they will come. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> also, like, somebody was saying at some point in the future, is these... Um, Game devices will be able to transfer games. So they're talking more now about maybe possibly the PlayStation stuff like that. With some of your more basic games, you'll maybe start from the PlayStation and be able to migrate the game onto your handheld and vice versa. So that's eventually where these things are moving towards, or that your your handheld becomes your gaming device that you can plug into a larger screen. Mm. Um, so future-wise, these what, things are going to be awesome and what, scarily cool. What you need with this is you need that uh, that what's it a uh, USB wireless, then you can or even there's um, there's the wireless HDMI, HDMI standard. Yeah. If you could have a device with wireless yeah. HDMI, you just put your t put your tablet next to the piece next to your next to your TV, bang, just game. Yeah, and, and watch I, movies, whatever. And and we're definitely moving closer and closer to just ha computing from your pocket. Yeah. So um, Asus are trying to, uh, I think, not artif ar artificially push that envelope with a pad phone. Yeah. Nokia not, not just tried. Them. There, there, there were a couple of manufacturers at Computex. Um, Asus sh was one showing yeah. showing those kinds of products with phone goes into tablet, bigger screen. 
So that, and, and, obvi- and obviously there's the, the there's the um, the, uh, the dock for the Atrix. Yeah, the Atrix, the, the, the Moto, Moto Atrix. Atrix, I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they also tried. So no, it's it's yeah. uh, one day we won't be using laptops, guys. It looks like. Yeah, well, you still need a decent keyboard. Walk, walk in, plug my phone to the dock. Got my keyboard plugged into the dock, screen plugged into the dock, network plugged in, and there's my piece. And I work, work, work. End of the day, I get up, I just unplug my phone, and I walk out the door. Yeah. Got everything, all my work, everything is all done on the phone. It's it's coming. Okay, we've got that. We just need to display. Yeah, we need a proper display and a proper keyboard that's mobile that, that you can take with you. Well, you don't need to. No, keyboard is sorted. Sorry, keyboard is sorted. Look at what uh, Tim bought for his iPad. Abs- absolutely, that's what I'm saying. Keyboard sorted. And, then, yeah, and that's why they plug it into a tablet. Tarting, hey? Screen. The screen is a problem, but you look at those, d- like Texas Instruments is working on those little DLP uh, projectors. Those micro projectors. And, yeah. and, and, with their, with and that's maybe where the Mozilla concept... Yeah. The Mozilla concept phone, well. if you guys have checked that. But my problem with that thing is the keyboard is that, projected. Projected. What's wrong with the normal screen? No, what's no, no, exactly no. Absolutely. no. A normal exactly. screen is fine, but that's it's for when you're mobile. Like, I'm a, no. I'm a road warrior. I don't sit in front of a desk a lot of the time. Um, and so I need a screen I can take with me, which is why where these hybrid pads might be cool. So you've got, yeah. like, a phone slotted into a tablet, and you've got your Bluetooth keyboard, did you see the? Did you see the guys from... Uh, uh, what's the university in Calgary in Canada? The guys with the with the flexible screens yes. and the flexible yeah. phone. That's so cool. Yeah. And, and with with there's patents for foldable screens and stuff. So that, uh, that, that's that another Apple idea now, as well. Yeah. So, but anyway, uh, uh, Microsoft have it. Sorry, I think Nokia might have some as well. All the gadgets that we have to show. Oh uh, yeah, I think it's. Oh uh, yes, yeah. Moving <laughs> along anyway. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's let's start with the on duism. Yeah, I think. <laughs> so that is the Omni... Samsung a- Omnia 7. Hold on, hold on. I'm bringing it, bringing it. Uh, let's <laughs> wait for it. There, there we go. go. Okay. And in the background, you can see the HTC flyer there. Okay. Shiny, shiny. So That's while right. he's doing that, Jan, just give us some background. What are we looking at here? You're looking at a Windows Phone 7 device, Samsung Omnia Oh, put 7. it back in the box. <laughs> Quickly, before it <laughs> yeah. uh, I know there are, there are Microsoft cooties. fanboys in this country. Um, and nothing wrong with that. Windows Phone 7 is actually not that bad. Um, <laughs> so it's, like, it's like colon cancer is really not, not that, that bad. bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know about you guys, but I don't speak this language. Really well. um, uh, we're going to have my rant later on about Mango. Though. Yeah, I, I, I read the introduction to your rant. I'm looking forward to it because it's going to be awesome. Got a cable. And you need to show the camera what you're on doing. Okay. Uh, so what you got? Cable, micro USB, whatever. Yeah. Charger? Is this like USB again charger. new Windows what? mobile phone that's coming out from the country? When's it going to be released fine. for yeah, but it just me why this isn't... Uh, sorry, sorry, Tim, you're busy asking when will the phone be released? Uh, to the general market. It will... They are looking, I believe, at a June 6th release. So this is... This is, um, oh. this is a major next step for Windows Phone in the country. Microsoft touted this as their next step into the South African market, blah 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 To give you guys a... Um, uh, some perspective on this. The Omnia 7 is actually a fairly old device. Um, this thing has been reviewed by Engadget back in October 2010, if, if memory serves. Oh. So it's a fairly old device. Microsoft have just really not been able to push their product into South Africa as hard as they wanted to, I think. I don't know if it's stock shortage or what the problem is. What but are the sophistications? Um, yeah, but they, they, were, uh, they brought the trophy and the Mozart in. That's, that's running out of stock, apparently. So they we tried have the trophy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vodac- it was exclusive to Vodacom for a time. Oh, wow. It might, even yeah. still st- it might actually be a Vodacom exclusive. I didn't even know that we had the trophy. I know yeah, we have the Pro 7. Is running out of stock like Apple runs out of stock? Because they only release enough that they will run out of stock? Or is there enough demand that they're running out of stock? Um, I, I think m- maybe they underestimated the demand. Um, to Look, um, chatting to business customers, which I know isn't, very, uh, isn't a sexy thing yeah. to do, um, because it, like consumer is where it, it's at at the moment. But there are a lot of South African businesses that are quite excited about Windows Phone 7 as it integrates into their existing architecture. Um, I don't, like, there's a lot of businesses that are not using BlackBerry, for instance. And, um, yeah, it integrates quite well to the exchange. Into exchange and, and Office and, and SharePoint, ship, yeah. the whole nine yards. Um, and while I'm not a personal fan, I understand why people are. And South Africa, I have conceded back in my days when I was a techie, South Africa is, a, is planet Microsoft. Oh, yeah, I know. It's, 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 it's a pain in my ass, but it's something one has to come to, to, to accept uh, if you work in the tech industry in South Africa. I've got a Windows DVD for you in the car if you need one. <laughs> <laughs> 
So anyway, not that there's anything, just so that... About the XP flyer. All right, so that, that's, uh, that Goethe's going to do as well. So he's, he's reviewed it. The review is up on my broadband. Yeah, End plug. Please. Uh, All right, okay, so talk us through it, dude. Let's see if we can actually. And that's got the new st- the new start screen with the little ring thing yeah, that you've got to move. Yeah, it's got the new start screen with a cool ring thing that you can move. I've got that on my phone too. Oh, is it? Yeah, because I've got a hacked ROM on it. Ah, there <laughs> we go. Um, and it also has these four icons. The four icons you can actually set um, to whatever you like, and if you drag it into the ring, then it starts up the application. So they you're quite busy, into yeah. Into camera. Sorry, you're quite busy. That's his uh, varsity that, schedule. That's my varsity se- oh. schedule. So, <laughs> yeah, there would be classes, lots of, lots of classes. It would be like us adding work into our schedule. Something like that, yes, Tim. Yeah. Except that he's got classes to go to. Like, I, when I was a student, I always used to, like, forget which venue the class was in. Oh, <laughs> our, our class is always in the same venue, so that's pretty awesome. Yeah, so they're making the students triple lazy now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, then home I screen. Enjoy it well. um, what's pretty cool is they've added some... Some transition animations, finally. <laughs> so now it's even more like Apple. So now it's even more like Apple. Well, finally um, but, it's more but like they've Apple. they've actually done some work to optimize it a bit for... I'm trying to get the angle right here. Yeah, yeah, we to can see. Um, Take us through the cool stuff. To so to optimize it for, like... Landscape okay, so this is not running an uh, Android version that's actually optimized for tablets. No, it's running Android 2.3.3, yeah. uh, which is gingerbread, not honeycomb. Honeycomb, they've said, is in the pipe. Um, the reason they didn't put it on immediately was because they couldn't tailor it to tablets. They they couldn't put um, sense. They couldn't tailor sense to tablets. Okay, so the thing is that so th- everything you're seeing there is more a HTC addition to Android yeah. to sort out uh, the to tablet the tablet and that's experience. That's actually some of the issues that I had with it. Like the the widgets are cool and all, but they seem to take up a lot of space, a lot more space. Yeah, than you don't have resize. Yeah. On gingerbread, you know, you'd resize stuff. Okay. Um, so they've also done some some other cool work. Uh, for, for now, have you had anything that actually uses that front-facing camera for something con- productive? No. So uh, nothing they, out they, yet. Because Skype be can't use it. Yeah, Skype can't use it. Okay, let's um, just kill the Skype thing. <laughs> it, it Google Talk uh, for Android doesn't support video chat for 2.3.3. It's for 2.3.4, I think. Um, but maybe things like Fring, I didn't actually check. There, there should be apps on the market. Okay, so right now it doesn't look calls, like it. Okay. But nothing stock, nothing on there from the start. So they've done some work for the notification bar to add the two panels. The two side columns, side. Yeah, the pl- uh, panels. And for and those panel. who haven't noticed, when you tilt it, it's actually got two sets of capacitive buttons. Oh, yeah. So where Motorola use software buttons, if I'm not mistaken. Um, every honeycomb, honeycomb tablet so far, ha- Honeycomb uses software buttons. So these guys use hardware buttons, but they put them on two different buttons. places on the device. Yeah, they put them at the top and the bottom. Oh, that is pretty cool. I just noticed them now. That's why I pointed them out. That is pretty awesome. awesome. And it's it's an important thing for a tablet. Show there on the camera there. What? Just show again. Look at the bottom of the screen there. Look at the bottom of the screen there. You can see the 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 buttons. It's a normal Android button. They switch off and Uh, and switch off. That's pretty cool. And that's a very important feature for a tablet, and it was a huge criticism of early Android tablets. And a valid criticism. The Galaxy Tab only has them along one side. So it's hard to get to your home button when it's in landscape orientations. Um, uh, like but that. this thing's got a stylus as well. Yes, which is one of the major things. This is the, the stylus that HTC. So it's like um, back to the back to the late 1990s. Yeah, back to the <laughs> no. stylus, I guess. But I don't. No, no it's um, not. No, but it's, it's, no, it's no, part I'm of the selling point. A lot of yeah, people, yeah, yeah. yeah, like something to actually write yes, with. Yes, yeah. And so and the uh, HTC Flyer's big selling point is um, and the, and the thing that they're putting a lot of their marketing into is that it's a note-taking device. Yes. So you one record. You record and take notes at the same time. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. And then whoa, whoa, you can say that again. What do you record? You, you, you can record audio. audio. Your lecture or your whatever. Um, which honestly isn't all that great. The, the microphones on the device itself aren't that fantastic. But so I, mean the I want the wireless mic I, that I can plug in here and the let the speakers there. The microphone so is front awesome. facing, um, I, I assume. I think there it these is. are the microphones. Over here. But the idea, the, so idea b- okay. the idea behind it, right, is you're taking notes the in a meeting. The principle is brilliant. In, yeah. a, in a meeting, and, and all you do is it, it tags as you're writing, yeah. and then you can go back and you, you just click on a word, and it'll play you when you wrote the word out of the audio stream, so yes. you can get the context oh, of why brilliant. you wrote that note. And then well, what they also integrate with it is you can take pictures, 
and it links up with your calendar. So if you make a new note, it, it goes, oh, you're in a meeting. Do you want to link it up with your calendar? That's so that, pretty you know, awesome. If, if you go back and go, there was this meeting two weeks ago, and I took some notes. Yeah. You don't have to go searching through your notes. You go to your calendar, the meeting, select the notes. Very cool. Okay. Right. And it all syncs with Evernote. Evernote. It's built in already. Oh. So it actually made me make an Evernote account. Well, I, I made one to test it out. Cool. Um, no, are you, you going to keep on using it? I'm more of a SpringPad fan. Okay. So I would have liked to have SpringPad integration out the box as well. Well, I would have preferred well, if it goes like into either Google. Of them. Just send yeah. everything into Google well, Docs. But um, Google Docs, how does that work with notes and stuff? Yeah, you can add, you can add attachments. Uh, attachments, how about handwriting? Well, it's a picture. Yeah. Yeah. It's a picture. The same way you can upload PDF documents and it'll convert it for you. Yeah, the, the issue is, is that they, there has to be meta information attached to that handwriting. That's the yeah. trick because you have to be able to click... Yeah. yeah, anyway, so... Look, good start. The, the, yeah, the, the absolutely. Evernote Nothing out there, and really the cool. thing about the no, stylus, no, you try and Dude, write... I'm joking about the stylus. I actually like the stylus. You try and write notes with your finger. It just doesn't work. Yeah, no, doesn't man, work. you can actually make little drawings and stuff. It's quite yeah. handy. I, I would buy one for the stylus point. It's just one problem with the stylus I got is... Yeah. It wait, doesn't wait, you got to show this. you got to show this. There's uh, a big problem with the stylus. Yeah, there's a big... There's two, two, two problems okay, with the stylus, cool. so I think. You, you run, th you run through the first... Let's give... Yeah, Steve, the, the, what's this your... Is, this is what I showed the Let's, the Let's Talk Afrikaans audience. Sorry, I'm far what? away from my microphone now. I'm going to move away so that I can demo. Stuart, go for it. What was your problem? It doesn't fit in the device. Yeah, yeah good point. Yeah, that would have... Okay, but so there's a bigger problem. What there's a bigger problem. Yeah, Jan's busy unboxing the bigger problem. It there's uses, a battery inside. It uses a battery, but it's not a double A. It's not a triple A. No, no. It's a quadruple A. Read them. Four A's. <laughs> Where Wait. will you buy this battery? I, I don't know. I haven't found one. Um, <laughs> so um, on. I haven't looked all that hard, but I mean... Uh, maybe clicks or something. Hold on, I'm just going to have a quick look, so carry on. Okay, cool. <laughs> and um, I'm also not sure how long the battery lasts. So yeah, we, we've I'm only had it for a week and they need to take it back to give it to other people to review. Um, so we weren't able to test the battery life on the stylus. Okay, if you want quadruple A batteries, RS has got them uh, for 225 Rand. Jump the link in the RSS. Yeah. Sure. RS? RS Electronics. Electronics, cool. Yeah. And you can order it. And they deliver for free this month. So <laughs> you can order your batteries and they'll deliver it to you for free. But I mean, like, can you get it over the counter? Can I walk into checkers or I've whatever? Ne you could probably get them from a pharmacy or a, or a, or a jewelry store, you know, a little bit more of a Yeah, yeah, because that's what I'm thinking. Because I'm wondering yeah. where triple or quadruple A batteries are used that, you know, because a jewelry store, you can get them there because you can get lithium batteries there because, because of, of watches. watches. Clicks. Mm, pharmacy. pharmacy is hearing aid normally batteries and things like that. And those also are teeny I, tiny ones. Yeah, I'm not sure. But anyway, RS has got them if you want. Yeah. So, so, so uh, in, in all honesty, I mean, I've looked at the, the usual suspects. I've looked at the, I've looked at our at our massive retailers, and I've looked at. Maybe I haven't looked at Macro. That's the one Walmart. I haven't looked at. Yeah, our new Walmart. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I mean, the thing is, I have rechargeable triple A's. I have rechargeable double A's. You know, I've got a charger for them. Now, I've got a charger that can charge everything from 9-volt batteries to D-cells, but it can't charge these. Quadruples. Well, if you can get a quadruple A and rechargeable, rechargeable, you could always just shove a little piece of tinfoil in the front <laughs> if it's a bit shorter. That's no, a triple A. <laughs> but, okay, I didn't, that's interesting that it's got a battery. What are the buttons on it for? Um, okay, the button, bottom button is for highlighting text. Yeah, and the top one is for erasing your. So notes. it's got a little radio transmitter in it, basically. I'd assume so because it ah. has to detect that the pen is busy touching the screen. Because as soon as the pen touches the screen, your palm is cancelled out, your fingers are cancelled. Yes, yes. So you scribble with that, and your hand. Interesting. Mm. Okay, so it's and probably got a, and a once, short range radio. And once the yarn, once the, the the physical pen touches the display, it also enters like a note-taking mode. Yeah. This so is something to, if you worth go to the, the web browser entry, quickly. If you if any screen, you can do it on any screen. Okay. Um, and wha what it actually does is it takes a snapshot. So basically a picture that you're busy scribbling on. And then you can save it or you can send it off with Twitter or Facebook. Uh, I'm going to try Opera Mobile. I'm not sure if it's going to work in here. Yeah. Okay, let's have it a look. Anyway. Let's, let's go to Bookface. And do you want to? <laughs> I, I, Are you I connected? I think I've logged in there. No. Okay, okay, there we go. Just use that screen and then... There is Bookface. No, sorry, we've messed up the focus now to focus on the triple A, quadruple A battery. Come, we'll come back. You do yeah. that. Now it's taken a, a picture and now I can scribble on it. Yeah. So it physically Whee! takes a screenshot and then, but now the, the, the only issue I have with that in a browser, for instance, is if you want to go back scroll. and scroll, yeah. scroll the page again, you can't yeah. without discarding the image. Yes. And then you can 
send save, it. And share via print. I didn't so you can try. you can see that Android itself wasn't really meant for this functionality. No, I mean they've hacked it on. HTC has worked really hard mm. to try and build it in. Yeah. Exactly. That's cool though. Yeah. All it's right. Done really well. It's done really yeah. decently. And it's quite, it's quite well built in that. It's, it's, it's and, very and nice. And even built. though it's not a dual core processor, it feels snappy. I was, I was a little hesitant when I first played with it. I played with a pre-release model um, when, they, when they first unveiled it for the South African market. And it was sluggish and it, it made me really, really nervous. And it seems like they've really improved the software since then. Okay. Right. Moving along. More cell phone stuff. Uh, oh. Possible ca cancer-causing effects. Just like coffee. Not this or again. just like everything else on the <laughs> yeah. planet. Um, like this box. Basically, it, uh, it's the usual crap. Cell phones are a possible cause of cancer. Yeah. Which but it's possibly not a cause of cancer yeah, either. Thanks for the useful information. Yes. So, um, so only very specific kinds of cancer. Uh, they've proven that it has no, definitely no correlation with a whole bunch of other, most cancers. Um, the, the two ones are related to, I yeah, I can't remember the two. Sort of head, head area cancer. Yeah, brain. And it's a type of brain cancer, yeah. But they, they now need to actually go and do a proper study to see is there or isn't there. They doing so it's on the same level as coffee. They do cause. they doing a uh, thirty five year study in the EU at the or starting now. Uh, to to definitively decide what is the link between cell phones and cancers. The, so by the time biggest I retire, problem I with know. it is, it's well, first of all, you're going to have to wait 35 years to know the results. Uh, they are tracking, they got, they're doing some interesting things. So what they're doing is they're tracking the person's usage of cell phone. If you, if you, if you sign up for the trial, you immediately sign over all your cell phone records to the, to the, to the study. Okay. So they're tracking how long you spent on the phone. They're also doing things... Uh, like you, if you use a Bluetooth headset or something like that, you have to tell the study that. They're tracking if your location? They're tracking your location. Okay. They're tracking when you use the phone. They are, they're not tracking who you, they can't really track who used it. Yeah. So, you know, within statistics, if you've got enough people, they're studying, as far as I know, they're studying 14,000 people for the next 35 years. So it's a really, really broad study. Does this so mean, do they, do they have to use the same phone for the next 35 no, years? No, they are taking into <laughs> account what phone you use. Okay. Um, so they will, they will characterize all the phones to how much, what, how much radiation, you know, how much. But that's what he's asking. If you, if you, I'm going to switch it, phones every two yes, years. Yes, but now you have, you have, have to notify variable. the study. And yeah. they, they how do they take that into account? Because you'll either put it on contract and your contract details will be available to them. Yeah, but how will they take that? I mean, your one, so which phone amongst the, no, like because 12 you use in the 35 years. Because you have to tell them. Cancer. No, but that's the okay. point. It's, it's not what phone it is. It's, okay. They can char characterize okay. how much, uh, how much uh, yeah. EMI okay. radiation that that phone mm. puts out. Fair enough. So your dose. So what they want to do is and after 35 years, how much radiation dose have you received? And in what part of your body? I can already see So if you're left-handed, you've got to say you're left-handed or right-handed. You've got to say if you use Bluetooth headsets or not. You've got to say... And if you change habits, you need to put it into the study. Mm. And they, every two years, you'll be, there's a medical checkup. Every single person will get checked every two years. And I think it's every six months there is a questionnaire that you have to fill out about your usage habits, any medical conditions, everything like that gets checked out. You also have to submit medical records, so any medication that okay. you're taking, things like that will be taken into account. But it's going to take 35 years. Moving away from the technical aspects of this to the more social aspects of this is that obviously now people are going to use this as, uh, as an excuse to go because this is a problem we've had in South Africa. There was a big debacle with iBurst who put towers up someplace and the community was like, we don't want this because of environmental effects and because yeah. of the potential carcinogenic risk that it, that it, that it uh, poses and all that stuff. So, so now you sit with those social problems because of... Because it, it Sorry, may or may I, not. No, but yeah. no, we don't. Because this is the only places is if holding the phone to your head, is that safe or not? Yeah, uh, I remember. Like, you know, they've categorically proven Wi-Fi has zero cancer-causing effects. As in there's no, nothing. It's, 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 remember, so it's, 
inverse square. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but people don't know this. Yeah, and I know. so and so this is now th- th- you have to get this information out there to yes. tell people listen it's not the base station. It is the it is Hence, the seat. It's the one e- watt e- transmitter that you're sticking in your ear. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say I still have a problem taking that cell phone while you're driving and putting it between your legs. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't. You've got kids. I mean like I still don't, <laughs> you don't need I've got a problem kids. with that. So I just I just want to say yes, I just yeah. don't do that. I mean that's just I don't know if it's a bad I don't know. <laughs> And, 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 and I'm know, not sure if I should if I should say this because correlation does not imply causation, causation yeah. but it does strongly waggle yeah. its eyebrows. Waggles its, its eyebrows. <laughs> yeah. So, but like when when I when I put a cell phone to my ear and I and I talk for like long periods, I'm talking half an hour, forty five minutes to somebody, right? That heating. Exactly. Uh, both. And, and and it's not just heating. Like the, uh, I I get this hard lump behind my ear, but it's not just cell phones. Yeah. It happens from you it know, happens from normal phones you know, as well. You know what that is? There's no airflow of your ear. And it just gets hot. <laughs> <laughs> Your ear's got a lot of blood vessels in it, and it just gets warm. <laughs> uh, they've shown that the, the they've shown that the, the tissue heating effects um, are actually. The amount of blood flow that flows through your tissue, and the uh, the amount of heating that goes on via the nine hundred megahertz uh, RF, yeah, yeah, is minuscule, and y- there is no actual tissue heating yeah, at all. Yeah. So anyway, um, we will have to wait probably thirty five years to know the results of the. Happy yeah. retirement. Yeah. By the <laughs> so take oh, insurance oh. out now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lying, by the way. Don't <laughs> take my advice. <laughs> Don't take anything that comes out of my mouth as, as advice. advice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, moving on. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> moving on. Um, I don't know who posted this. I think it was Tim. Uh, Daleks from Doctor Who are to be given a rest. You want to tell us a little bit more about it, Tim? Terminate. Uh, basically, the Daleks, who are quite one of the favorite baddies in uh, Doctor Who, uh, what they found is because it's, they've been the favorite, they've been so overused that they've pretty much worked out or written all the ways that you can circumvent them. So they, they're sort of too easy for the Doctors to stop or get rid of. Now. They're like vampires. What they do is basically take a ban using them for, stop using them in shows for quite a while. And just basically maybe at that point into a reboot or by that stage, you know, give them some time to basically improve so that the dog has to think of new ways to defeat them. Okay. So that's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, well, I think it, uh, there are plenty of Doctor Who fans in South Africa. They'll find that interesting. Where do you watch Doctor Who? BBC Knowledge or BBC Prime, eh? It's got it on. Torrance.eu. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Tim was trying to say something. <laughs> um, they've got Doctor You, all the series is on Netflix. So you can on watch Netflix. it there for more, a little bit more legal. But yeah, yeah, but you, you have to go through there. a VPN because it's not, it's not what, available. What it's not legal in South Africa. Yeah. Netflix in this country? No, no you don't. You've got to go through a VPN. You have to go through a VPN. And I uh, did not say strong VPN. Strong <laughs> VPN. <laughs> <laughs> um, but is it is it actually shown on channels yeah. available? I thought it was. I thought it was on BBC yeah. BBC I Prime. It was on BBC. And and that's available to which DSTV subscribers? Do you Pre- need a premium Prime. account? <laughs> premium, of course. Okay, uh, okay. Dude, I, it, all that's on the others is soccer, <laughs> and a religious channel. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're lucky, a movie magic channel, but just one. Yeah. And they 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 and it's subtitled, and they speak backwards. <laughs> Uh, apparently right, we need moving to move along, it along. We, we'd get told to move along. All right. Um, Blizzard Dota. We sit in here event and oxpiel our little Dota. It scares me that you know the lyrics. Okay. It's a Swedish song. I was in Sweden for six months. Wow. <laughs> All right. Uh, Heart of the Swarm. I don't know. It's the Heart expansion of the sw- pack to StarCraft 2. And my understanding is that yep. Blizzard has actually said that this is not for hardcore multiplayer StarCraft players. Um, this is going to advance the story. Mm. So it sounds like they are not going to add more units to the, uh, multiplayer. To the multiplayer, hopefully. Because if every time they do that, they upset the balance of the game. But I think they did mention that they, they, they might bring back um, some of the Brood Wars units. But I'm not sure if that'll be introduced but in the multiplayer. Single player, in I'm single not sure about multiplayer. Yeah. Because in single player, for instance, you could build the old medic. Oh um, yeah, and you can yeah. build the Goliaths. Yeah, and yeah. you can't do that in the multiplayer. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, what's this got to do with Dota? So now, now, I mean, obviously Dota 
it, it was spawned on one of um, Blizzard's IPs. It was spawned on Warcraft 3, right? Yeah. And so they built StarCraft 2's engine with the idea that eventually they would be able to do, they call them Aeon of Strife style games. Um, not just those, but obviously anything. But, yes. um, but they wanted to be able to monetize it. So, um, and, and to my knowledge, there's been a great vying in the, in, the, um, in the gaming industry for the developers that worked on Dota. So I think Blizzard has a dev, Valve has a dev, Valve has the actual dev. Um, okay. And so the Valve is going to be releasing, to my knowledge, an actual Dota game. I think they might even be calling it Dota. Um, cool. Uh, they have the actual Ice Frog working for them. Um, and, but I'm sure Blizzard picked up a couple of, of Dota devs as well. And so we're going to get Dota for Starcraft. Yeah, basically. Okay, and, cool. and, and I think most Dota... Uh, Hopefully well, more balanced. Are they going to yeah, call yeah. it something else then? Because you can't really call it Defense of the Ancients. Well, it, it, they might actually have the old fantasy characters and stuff. Just anyway. and, and a lot of people want that. They want the same old game. Yeah. That's what they wanted with Starcraft. Same old game. Give me just better graphics. graphics. Yeah. yeah. All right, Tim, you had a rant. Are we skipping the... Yes. All right, oh. yes. My <laughs> rant is about this mango. Keep it, I've just read continually now... Mango is released, uh, uh, Microsoft is releasing Mango to their cell phone, and this is going to destroy all their competitors, and it's a great product, and when can we get it? Fourth quarter. So you, know what, you know what that is? Have, That's I classic FUD. So you know the next Andro version of Android is going to be out by then as well? But will it be out in devices? So, Tim, why don't you start at the beginning and tell us what the hell Mango's is? Because when I typed in Mango, I got the airline. All right. Say go to Google.com. Code name for Microsoft's next for upgrade to the Windows, Windows Phone 7. 7. Okay. So basically, it's going to be 702 or 70, 7.03 is its uh, designation, but it's called Mango. And basically, it adds cut and paste. It adds a bunch of the features that A should have been there from the beginning. So, so hold on. Hold on. This current Windows 7 doesn't have copy and paste. Correct. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, I'm not even going to go there. Anyway, sorry, Tim, carry on. <laughs> Apparently, it is going to be it's a very cool update. It fixes the whole thing, creates streams. Adds a whole bunch of features, yeah. So, um, uh, look, I'm not bashing the update, although this will not be a revolutionary update. It's just, just a hype. Tell me about it once it's released and people have it on their phone. Telling me now, almost six months before, and saying, well, look, we, we are better than our competitors. Because in six months' time, we're going to have this update. I'm going, well, by that time, <laughs> they will be six months ahead as well. So yeah. how can you say you've beaten them now on something you haven't released? Yeah, Bulma's big thing with Mango was it's going to have over 500 features. Look, and, and it's not that it doesn't look impressive. Uh, they demoed some of the features so for us. 500 upgrades. Okay. Five, five, some of the things are upgrades. They're not even new features. All right. Well, well uh, to my knowledge, I remember seeing the slide 500 features being added. So, well, so it's, it's a big promise, and, and some of the stuff does look cool, but I must say that I also tend to, tend to almost be offended at some of, their, some of their marketing hype they're building around it. Like, for instance, they're talking about setting third-party apps free uh, from their silos. I'm like, have you used Android? There is one smartphone platform on this planet that apps have running in silos. And that smartphone platform is called iOS. Everybody else's stuff does not run in silos. They can, you know, they can be widgets on the front page. They can talk to other apps. Um, so, like, yeah. Coming back to your 500 features, I can just rattle off 10. Copy and paste from your web browser. Copy and paste from your email. <laughs> copy and paste from your... <laughs> okay. So I can see how they can get 500. But this update is supposed to be a very cool update. It's supposed to add some very cool features. But I remember something now that is releasing in, was it 10 days time, called Duke Nukem, and we were all promised it. And until it's delivered and it's there, you know, maybe tell me about it a month beforehand or 15 days. But telling me six months which means they're still doing dev on it. It, it isn't finished yet. Tim, it's not going to be six months. You know how these things go. It's going to be 12 months, and then it's going to slip a little bit further. So maybe like by 2013, you'll see it. Yeah. They need so to have it out by the end of the year, but yeah. there have been talks about it being slipped. I can't believe that there's still a, a, guy, a, a company out there releasing any platform without cut and paste. Yeah, I mean, everybody's come on, made that mistake. I've got a, I've got a, I've got a palm, I've got a palm top from the 1980s. 
the mid 90s and you know what it can do it can copy and paste between dos applications <laughs> you know how freaking awesome that is that is oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but i mean all all of them did this i mean uh, the first iphone will came out no cut and paste next update they fixed it android had the same problem no cut and paste the next update and now microsoft does the same thing and right? i must say these other guys fixed it a damn sight faster than the Man, and they didn't system. tell us six months before, <laughs> and no, yeah, I didn't try and paint cut and paste as a revolutionary update. Well, I'm not sure they they're painting it as a revolutionary update. Like when when we uh, when we do poke fun at it, you know, the Microsoft yeah. guys kind of they they kind of look a bit sheepish. But I mean, the features that they are including, it's impressive. I I, I just maybe but is it disagree gonna, with is it going to be impressive? Is it going to yeah. be impressive in six, in or six years? months? And that is time. a valid question. Right, After we have let's else. let's. I think that's it for tonight. Um, so I'm, we're yeah. going to sign off. Uh, thanks, Tim. Thanks for, for coming in on Skype. I hope you feel better. Uh, thanks th to you, Hans, too, for running the show. Yeah, thanks, else for, for doing the mixing. Always thanks. a pleasure. Please, yeah, before thanks, you run Harris. away, please remember to catch our other shows on this network. Let's talk Afrikaans. Let's talk sport. And let's talk possibilities. Yeah. Let's talk Afrikaans is tomorrow night. We hope so. I'm just going to say we hope so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you should have uh, Cole Fisher on talking. Oh, we do. Yeah, we're aiming for Carl. He's just not confirmed yet. <laughs> so hopefully we'll catch it tomorrow. And um, yeah, uh, thanks for everyone in the Where IRC. can everybody get us? Thanks for everyone listening. Uh, you can catch us at ltstar.tv. Uh, all the shows are on there. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank next you very week. much. See you next week. Yep. yep. Rock out with your geek out. <laughs>